the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Caitlin Bassett obviously standing in for Nathan today. Time to talk budgets. State budgets. It's just the most exciting day of the year, uh, State Budget Day. Uh, Let's catch up with the Treasurer, who uh, she looks pretty well put together, I've got to be honest, um, considering it is a very busy day. Rita Safiotti joins us. Good morning. Morning. How's everyone today? Great, Rita. We are wonderful, Rita. Excited. Uh, Yeah, are you excited, Rita? Because you're passing down your first budget, obviously. Um, Sorry, excited and nervous? Excited, like a lot of adrenaline, you know, so there's a lot of adrenaline pumping through me, yeah. Mm. Um, probably not, probably similar to going out and playing a game of footy. But, um, you yeah, know, I'm very excited. <laughs> like Rita, you're going to be out the footy tomorrow night, by the way, because you've been able oh, to put the bu- budget girl. aside. Uh, I've got a budget function, but I'll try and get there. Uh, it's going to be a big game, Sydney Swans. It's going to be a huge game. My kids are definitely going to get get there, though. I couldn't think of anything worse than a budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds throwing, throwing down the budget's one thing. Having to go to budget-related shindigs afterwards, please come on. <laughs> uh, that's part of the job. It's part, part of the job. job. It's a big. It's a thank you to everyone that's helped put together the budget. There's a lot of people that do a lot of hours. So, yeah. but it's going to be like I said, a great game. I'll tip free mount or like I always do and see how we go. Absolutely. Now, I want to ask you about the budget itself. So, we've seen a few things that are coming our way. So, from a government's perspective, there's a lot of stuff talking about infrastructure, but then because because people don't see that, okay, what is that for me? Whether yes. the roads getting done or stuff mm. for green energy is getting done, no one cares. They want to see. Sorry, I, I said that now. Us? What's in it for us individually? <laughs> So a big focus is cost of living, of course, yeah. and that means we've seen some announcements, in particular the student assistance payment for those uh, those families with kids going to primary or high school. Mm-hmm. So we've seen 170,000 families already claim uh, payments. We've, of course, got free public transport for kids going to school. In regional WA, we've rolled out an increase in the pensioner travel card and capped airfares. So there's some of the announcements we've already made. We'll be making some more announcements today as cost of living is a big focus. And we know that people out there are uh, trying to manage their budgets. And of course, with cost increases and interest rates, it's got harder over recent years. There's been a bit of a suggestion that maybe some more energy cost relief might be headed our way, Rita? They'll be announced this afternoon. Like I said, if I tell you everything, I'm going to listen. Just wink twice if we're getting money off our power bill. (laughs) (laughs) Rita, I'm not that good at winking. To be honest, (laughs) she just blinked. Uh, Rita, tell us about housing. I've just moved back to Perth, and getting a rental here was bonkers. I can, you know, what is there going to be some relief there? Are there going to be more houses being built? Like, what's the plan? Yeah, there's a number of different initiatives. Of course, we're going to be building more houses directly, more social housing. But we've also created this fund to try and create and facilitate uh, more uh, apartments and other homes through a new affordable housing fund. So we're going to try and get as much new housing built. Uh, The other key points is we've got this new initiative where we pay anyone that's got an Airbnb $10,000 $10,000 if they convert it from an Airbnb to a long-term rental. Already 150 homes have been released onto the long-term rental market. And we've got interest and a lot of interest for more. And with a new initiative that we announced two days ago, we're going to pay people that have vacant homes or homes that haven't been lived in for six months, $5,000 to get them onto the long-term rental because we think there's a lot of um, empty homes out there. We want to try and get into the market. And we're also subsidising a lot of trade uh, apprenticeships to get more tradies out there to build more homes. So we're trying to tackle it from every angle because it's a major challenge. And we know that's in pressure point for the community. It's something that we're really trying to do whatever we can to get more homes built quicker. From a business perspective with the housing um, industry in particular, we've seen a lot of them go to the wall and this has been nationally as well. I don't know if this is a federal thing or uh, the state government can help out. I'm sure you've had these conversations with this industry in particular of how they, they can get some backing given that, you know, a lot of them have gone to the wall. I know that they don't have the personnel and, and the manpower at the moment, which you just spoke about with the apprenticeships, but how can they you know, go out there and be a part of uh, the business community and help yeah. us mm. create more homes if, if, if yeah, you're not able pe- to get it and done? And people that are building home, well, having homes built now, are they seeing the, the length of the build time blow out? Oh. They're like, how can we build more when they, they're not even building the ones they don't have the cash that are halfway flow. through? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, a couple of things, in particular in relation to builders. We In WA, we set up a builder's loan facility. Yep. Um, and this is the first in the nation where we're basically helping builders with cash flow. We've just signed off the first series of grants and I think we'll be announcing those in the next few days. But that's what's that about, is supporting builders with cash flow to finish those homes which are stranded out there. And we all, and we all know some people have had builds um, being undertaken for a number of years that yeah. aren't finished. And this facility will help builders finish those homes. Oh, that's good. We've, we've got that. And more generally, we've got a lot of different incentives. Like we've got this infrastructure fund. Sometimes a big cost of building, let's say, an apartment building, a mm -hmm. four-story apartment building, is the water and the um, sewerage and electricity connections. So we're stepping in and helping support uh, fund that infrastructure so we can try and get more apartments. We've also got a lot of land out there, which we keep off we're, we're offering through different measures that builders can cut, builders and developers can access government land to then build um, more more buildings. So we're trying everything, but we know it's it's a it's the toughest market we've ever seen. It's a, sl and it's a slow burn to yeah yeah. Like it's, we're not going to wake up tomorrow and there's going to be more houses. It's mm. going to take time. Yeah, but I tell you what, this um this uh, incentive for Airbnb owners or short term rental yeah. owners to release their property onto the market, it's been really successful. 150 homes in six months, and that's that's in like. And you're getting those straight away. You know what I mean? Yes, you have to wait yeah. for the build. So yeah. that's why we really like those types of initiatives. And look, I know there's a lot of empty... We've, we estimate thousands of empty homes out there. And that could be for a variety of reasons, um, a variety of reason, re reasons. And people just aren't ready or able to get it ready for a rental market. So now we've created a new $5,000 payment to try and get those vacant homes onto the market as well. It's an interesting time at the moment for our state in particular because we're, the population increase is, is getting yes. there and it's only getting more and, and we more. And need, we need more people mm -hmm. here to build all these houses and to work, you know, in the, in the resources industry. But, you also but they've got to live somewhere. Like, are you, you know, you're chasing your tail yes. in, in, in a sense in that perspective. Because the more Rita. people you get here, the more yeah. houses you need. <laughs> Yeah, well, look, that's why we're very much focusing too on getting West Australians uh, um, trained in the housing uh, in the before in to build homes. Yeah, so, yeah. So we're wanting to train as many West Australians um, to build homes. That's why we've got these initiatives, a new apprenticeship scheme where we basically fund the apprenticeship. We've had about 150 take it up in the first months of this year, another 150 being offered now. We're doing what we can to try and train West Australians because it's all about the ability pick in some of those key trades like the plasterer, like the bricklayer, you know, mm -hmm. the tiler. That's, they're the trades we're really chasing, um, carpenters, of course. So we're we're trying to get as many West Australians trained. But, yeah, look, a lot of people are coming to WA because of the job prospects. Mm. We've got the lowest unemployment rate of the nation and we've had sustained low unemployment. So you've seen people move from other states and you've seen people move, uh, um, people coming back to our education sector, to our university sector. So it is, it's a, it's a challenging period because having population growth is good for the economy because demand increases and, um, you know, basically the economic growth is fueled by that. But the challenge is getting that housing. Yeah, for sure. Well, we appreciate your time today, Rita. You're a busy woman handing mm. down your first budget. Good luck. I hope it goes well. Good luck, well. Rita. Not properly. Make sure you stretch before you put it down. <laughs> yeah. great, great advice. <laughs> Thanks. I'll, I'll make sure I don't do a hammy. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Thanks for talking to us this morning. It's the treasure, Rita Safi on everybody. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. I was a bit slower getting in here this morning because it took me forever to pack my gear to get into work this morning. Oh, to pack your, your your lunch bag. And yeah, my lunch bag. Yeah, yeah. And one of the uh, one of the things is really the great thing about being by yourself at home or having your own place. Yes, tell me, Is Sean. that when you put something in a uh, cupboard or you wash it, something and you put it away, guess what happens the next day when you go to look for it? It's still there. It's still there. Yes. This morning. I was looking for a protein shaker that I've been using, yeah. and I, when I was doing all my swimming uh, a little while ago, I I bought three. Yeah. And the reason why I bought three is because you I've got all these kids, and those little bastards will stake <laughs> one, and they'll leave it, or they'll leave it in their car, and I just know that one will go missing every single time. Three, that should have a covered. Yeah. This morning, not one to be when found. I went, and they're, they're they're put in the same spot where all these um, drink bottles are put, and you know some pretty good ones in there. You know, None in of the them got lids. Shaker cupboard. <laughs> None of them have got lids. 
<laughs> I mean, uh, how's that possible? Look, I'm not an expert in protein shakers, but I would think that a lid is fairly essential to the shaking part of it. Three lids for three protein shakers, and we only had the vessels there. And then, and then, where are the lids to... going? Because you don't know. use the lid for anything else. No, but when you put stuff in the dishwasher, it's not hard to put it back in the same spot. Of, you know, when you're emptying the dishwasher, for example, mm. or you've used something, mm. you put it back in the same spot you got it from. Mm. Impossible. I've got a protein shaker in my cupboard. <laughs> it's still there. It's still there. I know exactly Maybe where I it is. Maybe I should use yours, clean it out, give it to you, then every day. <laughs> yeah, that's what I bring it in for you. <laughs> yeah, no, you've got a wife. Um, <laughs> this is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We've got Caitlin Bassett sitting in Nathan's chair with tales to tell. Tales to tell, all right. So we had uh, Kelsey Brown in here yesterday from the West Coast Fever, who you played with yes. at the Lightning. Yes. And you guys are really great mates. She was telling us, and we know that you're right into pets, which is fantastic. You love your animals. She she was saying, oh, um, Seabass used to uh, take, take animals her, to birthday parties. Like do a pet, <laughs> yeah, do like a pet farm for the kids. They can have a pet. <laughs> what was that about? So okay, so there's two stories here. So the first story is my very first job when I was 12 was a friend of ours owned a baby animal farm on wheels. Amazing. And so one day he said, hey, do you want to come out? I've got three birthday parties to go to. So I was like, yep, yep, yep. So it was great because they had baby goats and they had a cow and a donkey. Yeah. All these day old chicks, they had rabbits. That's how I really got my love of rabbits. Yeah, yeah. Because if you were given a child a duck, sometimes they love them the, too much. Squ- yeah, squeezes. Yes. Yeah. Whereas, and if you saw that happening, you would replace it with a rabbit, and a rabbit would scratch and get away and actually live. Okay. So yeah, right. I love that. So anyway, one day I saw <laughs> Every, everyone's a winner in that situation. One day, particularly the duck. I saw a young boy who was giving a duck a little bit too much love, and I stepped back to pick up a rabbit, and there was all these day old chicks in the <gasps> pen. See that? Did you step on a few chicks? I stood on one chicken, a little baby chick, and I've got big feet. And <laughs> oh. uh, the boy saw what happened, and we both just cried because this chicken, unfortunately, it was hurt. It was very hurt. It went to heaven. It, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it went to the farm. <laughs> yes. So, so from then on, I was always yes. very wary about yes. small animals. It was a hard birds. lesson to learn as yes. a twelve-year-old. But when I moved to the Sunshine Coast, when I first got a contract offer, I was like, "Oh yeah, I've got." I had lemon curd and cupcake. My two rabbits here. Mm. Sweet. We're going to move over to lemon the Sunny curd. Coast. Yep. And uh, then I found out rabbits are illegal in Queensland. Yeah, you can't keep a pet can't rabbit. Happen. But the, well, there is a loop. So, so why? What would be the reason? And the fine's massive. Yeah. Yes. So it's a. It was a forty-four thousand dollar fine. It's jumped up to $65,000 if you're caught with a rabbit because some horrible humans have decided they don't want their rabbit anymore and let and them go. And they've them. eaten all the crops and they've you yeah. know, bred like okay. rabbits. You know, rabbit like rabbits. Rabbits. Bred like rabbits. Yes. Uh, because they're uh, rabbits. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I found out the loophole was you could apply for a magician's licence because <laughs> if you were a magician, you were legally, yes. you were legally allowed to have a rabbit. Well, I would say you're obligated to yes. have one if you're a magician. Exactly. Mm. And so um, I tried to do that because... Do they make you do a magic trick as part of the interview, you had to prove that you were going to do X amount of kids' parties. And Amazing. I was like, oh, we could just, after the netball game, like all the kids could come down to the court, I could get lemon curd out, pull him out of a hat, like happy yeah. days. But it didn't end up happening, so. <laughs> so they got left behind. They got left behind. But mm. yes, I oh, am, As in, not dumped in the no, bushes with your mum, with your mum and dad? No, oh, a yep. beautiful family who I met through netball, oh, um, cute. I left them here with, and they would send me weekly updates. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's, that's really cute. Cool. But yeah, I am known for bringing animals places, like, <laughs> you go down to the coffee shop and I'll have um, big wee in a bum bag or something like that. I mean, you had bought lemon, yeah, lemon really. curd and cupcake yeah. in here yes, a number exactly. of times, actually. They're they so felt, easy. Yeah, yeah. Bunnies, they are cute. Yes. But you need to handle them a lot, do you, uh, for them to be affectionate? Or? Oh, yes, yes, yes. They're like, they're easily trained. So, Big Wee Wee, my rabbit at the moment, he's toilet trained. He's like a cat. So, he goes in the litter tray. He Does comes he really? when you call him 100%. Where did, where'd you get that name from? Big Wee Wee. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's French. Do you know that? Oh, yeah. okay, right. <laughs> wee Wee. <laughs> <laughs> You're a puzzle. See, that's you your puzzle, i got to say. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Where do, who you go for, Seabass? Oh, oh Seabass, eh? I am the media. I am impartial. I know. Oh, before you are. Real. Before you are in the do media. Do you know what? I actually just love watching both WA teams play. And I know that sounds really boring I and I can't roll my eyes enough. I know. I know. Okay. I get to deal with both clubs. They're both, like, the players are all great. So, so. you are mentioning before um, off air, but you are at the Giants. Yes, I was at the Giants, yes. So did you... I don't like them anymore. <laughs> I don't go for them. <laughs> you had a bit to do with the players, though? Yeah, well, because our netball club and the football club, like, you all trained at the same venue. Yes. You all saw each other. If there were events, you'd all go to together. So I was lucky enough to go to Red Hot Chili Peppers with uh, Cogs and with um, Shane Mumford and with Toby Green <laughs> my first year. So, yeah, we, cool. we had a lot to do with each other. It was great fun. 
What a life. What an insight, hey? I want to go and hang out with those guys. Yeah, no, no, no they said you can't come. No, no. You can't. <laughs> You're not part of the team. Okay. <laughs> it's the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Time for us to get out of here. Steve Ass, you were so great chatting to Sean Darcy this morning that we thought, do you want to come back in tomorrow and talk to Gov? <sighs> Why not? Why not? Let's, I mean, I do love both teams, so may as well be fair. I, that's I right. don't I know. If you. I talk to if, one yes. player, I've got to talk to the if other. If you're going to sit there with a picket up your butt, you're going to have to go both ways. <laughs> and, and you're a liar because you will have a team that you're associated with. Really? We're going to yes. beat it out of you. Mm, okay. Or we'll see. Yeah. Well, Gov needs to impress me. You know, you've got to win my... Um, oh, loyalty. Yeah. oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I think he'll do that. Okay. We'll see. All right. That's happening tomorrow. We'll see you then. Hello, Ross. Hello, Ross. <laughs> hey, Ross. Hey, Ross. The new studio's working, Ross. Hey, Ross. What's up, Ross? Ross. He's coming in. He's going to come in. Something's Ross. gone wrong. Press on air, Ross. <laughs> on air, Ross. <laughs> Ross. <laughs> Is this your first time? My desk uh, isn't working. Oh, my desk isn't working. Old check, nuts. check to the studio. How are you going to have to throw uh, stuff? All this stuff is brand okay. new, Ross. I know. Let me know when. Yeah, 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 I will. <laughs> did, um, he, did he stop pedalling or something? Is that <laughs> Everything was good to go, but yeah, it didn't, didn't work. It's Caitlin, yes. you, so you can't between, uh, pick between <laughs> Eagles Dockers? I, no, she can. I can't. She'll have no, a, I can't. See, see, that's what people would normally do. Is, is Greater Western Sydney are a, would be a really good option. Do you know what I mean? No. Like, they're up-and-coming team. They've got a great song because there's a big, big no. sound from the west of the town. No. I hate that song. You can't do Oh, oh. no! no da, 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 No, I hate it. I hate it. It's a great song. It's not. Like, for all the new songs. No, please don't. It's torture. Did you have the same song for the Neville team? Yeah, we had to sing that. Yeah, but we didn't win very often. I love the song. I reckon it's the best. Did you have a favourite between Sean and Nat? I, no, you can't. It's like children. Yeah, you, can. you can't pick no, a favourite card. Oh, this is just knives well, in it. the eyes. Ugh. Yeah. Get up and about, everyone. <laughs> so, uh, big, big sound from the west of the town. It's the sound of the mighty giants. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.